Gluten-free diets are one of the fastest growing diet trends. But is there a real reason for people without celiac disease to avoid gluten? Today I'm going over studies on whether gluten sensitivity is real, whether the symptoms of it can be cured, and whether the rest of us should be avoiding gluten for our health and weight. Hey there, I'm Mish, and I am a full-time researcher with my PhD, and by day I conduct and publish studies of my own, and by night I share the results of other people's studies here to help you reach your weight loss, fitness, health, and nutrition goals. And today I'll first be talking about gluten sensitivity, and then some thoughts on why there might be such controversy about whether or not it's real, then I'll get into whether all of us should be avoiding gluten, and lastly, some pretty theoretical stuff on whether we might be able to cure the symptoms of gluten sensitivity. First, gluten sensitivity is a phenomenon where a lot of people say that eating gluten makes them feel like crap, even though they test negative for celiac disease. And celiac disease is sort of the real form of gluten intolerance where eating gluten really is destroying people's bodies in a way that we can very, very clearly observe <laughs> through many studies. Whereas gluten sensitivity is more of this vague, ambiguous phenomenon that a lot of people don't think is real, doctors included. Gluten sensitivity tends to be more common in adults than children, whereas celiac arises a lot of the time in children. And the median age of onset for gluten sensitivity is 40 years old, and it's about twice as common in women compared to men. And the way to test whether gluten sensitivity is real or due to placebo is to do a double-blind, randomized, controlled trial of giving gluten-sensitive people gluten and seeing how they react. And there have been several studies that have done that, so I will be going over those to get an answer on whether gluten sensitivity is real or just in people's heads. In these types of studies, they take people who say that they're gluten sensitive and then either give them actual gluten or fake gluten. So for example, the main study I'll be using as the example today, even though the results are corroborated across a bunch of studies, used gluten-free bread and muffins versus gluten-filled bread and muffins, and critically, a separate set of taste testers said that both of these types of bread and muffins tasted exactly the same. So this is how we can see if people are actually allergic to the gluten or if it's just in their heads because they think they're eating gluten. And these researchers gave people either the real gluten or the fake gluten for six weeks and then looked at their symptom reports. And importantly, all these people said that their symptoms had been controlled on a gluten-free diet before this study. So they were feeling good on their gluten-free diet. They started the study. Half of them got actual gluten. Half of them thought they were getting gluten, but there was no actual gluten. And then the researchers compared the symptoms between these two groups to see if there's any truth to gluten causing more symptoms. And here is a figure of the types of symptoms that were experienced by people. So the main symptoms of gluten sensitivity tend to be IBS-like, so they get a lot of gastrointestinal issues. But there's also other types of symptoms that occur that aren't gastrointestinal, such as fatigue and brain fog, tend to be the most common ones. And the big important result is that 68% of people who got the actual gluten reported that their gluten sensitivity related symptoms got worse. So just as expected, you give gluten sensitive people gluten and they felt like crap. But the important caveat to that is that 40% of people who got fake gluten claimed that that gluten was making their symptoms worse. And this set of results, as well as the results obtained in other similar studies, tells us two things. One, gluten sensitivity does seem to be real in some people, but also two, there is a huge placebo effect. So for a ton of people, gluten sensitivity seems to just be in their head. And for you science buffs out there, I'm using the term placebo just because it's more familiar to people, but in this case, we're technically talking about nocebo, which is the evil twin of placebo, where people get bad effects just from believing something has bad effects. Whereas with placebo, we typically talk about people getting good effects from believing something has good effects. So I'll still use placebo just because, you know. And a meta-analysis, which is the gold standard of studies, estimated that only about 15% of people who claim to have gluten sensitivity actually have gluten-specific symptoms. So only about 15% of people actually have reactions to gluten specifically. And they estimate that about 40% of gluten sensitivity is just due to placebo. So in a given group of people with gluten sensitivity, we might guess that about 15% actually are sensitive to gluten itself. About 40% of people are just reacting because they believe that it's causing them reactions. And the rest of the people probably are allergic to something similar or having something else going on where their IBS is irritated by grains or something like that. 
And saying that 40% of gluten sensitivity is likely due to placebo is not to invalidate people's experience because placebo is a very real and a very powerful thing and a lot of the time it's out of our control. I've actually gone over a lot of studies here on how powerful placebo can be for actually achieving our goals when we harness it in the right way. And in fact, either the next episode or the one after is gonna be on how placebo effects can be used to increase the effect of exercise on our bodies. So be sure to hit the subscribe button and notification bell if you haven't already. But for the people who are having placebo-related gluten sensitivity, it is still real. They are still getting real relief from cutting out gluten and having real bad effects from including gluten back in their diet. It's just a different cause. It's not that their stomach is reacting to gluten. It's more that their brain is reacting to gluten, which is still valid in my opinion, but the treatment is different. And another consideration is the fact that even though celiac tests are pretty great in terms of actually picking up on celiac, there's still a chance that it's gonna miss some celiac unless you're getting a biopsy. So specifically for every 100 people with celiac that get a celiac test, one to five of them will actually come up negative on that test. So if you are really, really, really convinced you have celiac and you've come up negative, it might be worth trying again in the future and being sure that you've had plenty of gluten in the days before that test so that your body has a chance to react and produce the markers of it being very upset, <laughs> to put it simply. And another possibility for what might be happening here is that there are plenty of people with wheat allergies that might be attributing it to gluten, even though they don't have gluten specific symptoms. So for those other people who are neither actually gluten sensitive nor having placebo effects, they might be having wheat allergy effects, for example. I also think that one reason there's so much controversy surrounding gluten sensitivity is that we really don't have a great idea of what causes it. Like the actual underlying mechanisms haven't been definitively identified. So I think this happens a lot when we get a condition without any mechanisms, you get a lot of people saying it's not real. So it does seem like it's real for a good number of people. We just don't really know what causes it yet. And now I'll talk about whether the rest of us without gluten sensitivity or celiac disease should avoid gluten for our health and our weight. So I'll mostly be focusing on a review that talked about the pros and cons of eating gluten for people who don't have gluten sensitivity or celiac or anything like that. And one of the funny tidbits in there was that a lot of athletes say that cutting out gluten really improves their performance and they just do so much better. But studies that have actually looked at that have not found any benefits from cutting out gluten. So it does not seem like gluten actually has any benefits for athletic performance but I don't doubt that for people who are actually gluten sensitive, cutting out gluten would probably make you have better athletic performance. And other studies have found that eating more gluten actually predicts lower risk of heart disease. And the authors speculated that this is due to eating more whole grains, but we don't actually know. And higher gluten intakes have also been found to predict lower cholesterol levels. And as for weight, a study found that just adding bread to people's diets actually made them lose weight. So if you're interested in that, I made a video on it here that I talk about a lot because it's just so fun. <laughs> and now I'll get into whether you might be able to cure gluten sensitivity. And I say this for the end because it's more speculative and less directly based on evidence. A review in a nature journal speculates that gluten sensitivity might actually be temporary, not based on human studies, but based on cell studies and animal studies. It seems like celiac disease has a memory for being allergic to gluten is how they put it. So your immune system essentially remembers that it hates gluten and it will for the rest of your life for the most part. Whereas with gluten sensitivity, it seems like our immune systems might actually forget after a while that it doesn't like gluten. So it might essentially get over its sensitivity after a while, but it seems like it might be key to cut out gluten for a long time, like a year or two, and then come back to it and see if you're still sensitive. Now this is definitely speculative. This is absolutely not to say that we have shown in humans that people get over gluten sensitivity or something. So it's based on indirect data, which on YouTube is often called a fact. And I also have a theory based on studies of other immune system phenomena that one reason we might have so much gluten sensitivity compared to sensitivity to other types of proteins is that our immune system might essentially be getting mixed up. <laughs> so to back up, there is this phenomenon where if you get exposed to something that is benign along with something that causes an inflammatory reaction, then your body sometimes mistakenly attributes the issue to the benign thing. So for an example, let's say you're really allergic to ragweed, which is a very common allergy, and you go to a lavender field. You've never had issues with lavender before, but in this lavender field, there's both lavender and ragweed. 
After experiencing that lavender field, you might find that in the future you actually now have a lavender allergy. And this has been shown before in studies to happen where your body can essentially get mixed up and start blaming something innocent for something else that tends to go along with it that actually causes problems. So in this case, what could be happening, totally speculative by me, this has not been shown in studies, is that gluten might often come alongside glyphosate, which is a pesticide that is especially heavily present on wheat crops. And we know that glyphosate causes inflammation and wreaks havoc in our bodies. So it could be that if we're always getting gluten with a ton of glyphosate, our body could start reacting to the gluten and thinking the gluten is bad when really it's the glyphosate causing the problems. But of course, it's not clear if that's the case because oats also have glyphosate, but it's just one possibility. And if we were to tie in my theory here with the speculation that maybe we can cure gluten sensitivity over time or get over it essentially, then if you do decide to cut out gluten for a long time and then try it again in the future, I would recommend trying organic. There's no downside to trying organic, which is why I feel comfortable recommending it besides it costing more. So if you can afford it, then it might be worth giving it a try just in case. Again, this is just a theory, but you know, getting less glyphosate will help you feel better generally most likely. So it's kind of a win-win if it also helps you get over your gluten sensitivity. Now back to the harder evidence. Overall, what the studies have gone over today tell us is that gluten sensitivity does seem to be real. There does seem to be a significant proportion of people who actually have very bad reactions to gluten. And this includes things ranging from really bad stomach issues to brain fog, fatigue, eczema, and all the stuff in that pie chart. But for those who aren't actually gluten sensitive, it seems like having gluten in our diets is not only not a bad thing, but might actually be a good thing. So this is a clear case of individual differences where just because gluten is bad for some people does not mean it's bad for all of us. So I definitely don't think you need to be cutting out gluten if you don't have any bad reactions to it and you're not gluten sensitive or celiac. There's no reason to get rid of it for health, at least according to the study so far, but organic is definitely the better choice, especially for wheat because it is so filled with glyphosates, unfortunately. And I talked about this last video, but I'm talking about it again because it is again relevant and is again a good way for you to figure out if you are actually sensitive to gluten and that is doing allergy tests. So either with an allergist or at home tests, but studies have shown that IgG reactivity is really diagnostic of gluten sensitivity. And it turns out that the food allergy test I've mentioned here in the past, which is just the one that I've taken, actually specifically tests for IgG reactivity to gluten. So this test might be able to tell you if you're gluten sensitive. I can't say how accurate it is. I am not related to the company in any way. I can only tell you that it's the only at home food allergy test company I know of and it's the only one I have used. But besides that, I don't really know. So I'll put the link to that allergy test in the description below in case it can help you start to figure out if you might be gluten sensitive. And another way to figure it out, of course, is to eliminate gluten. But in that case, you don't know if you're in the 15% of actual gluten sensitive people or in the 40% of people who experience nocebo or placebo health effects from cutting out gluten. So if you decide to cut out gluten to test whether you are gluten sensitive, I would suggest making sure that you don't go into it strongly believing that it'll make you feel better. Even without believing, you'll still get placebo effects probably because placebo is really sneaky and everywhere like that. But Try your best to approach it like a scientist and to not go in with a preconceived assumption of what's gonna happen if you wanna get the most accurate results from cutting out gluten. And I'm losing my light here, so I'd better wrap up, but I wanna address the black blob in the room, which is the new microphone that I was able to get thanks to all of your generosity on the GoFundMe page for upgrading the equipment here. So now, thanks to you, we've gotten the new camera, which happened a little while ago when we hit an earlier milestone, and now we've got the microphone. I don't know where to put the microphone, so I don't want it like, typical style of right here. Sorry, that'll make it really loud. I'll have to make that quieter in post-processing. <laughs> but I don't want to do the annoying thing of having it in front of my face, but the closer the better. So I don't know how much of an audio upgrade I'm even going to get from being this far away. But if you have opinions, I'd love to hear it. Drop them below. I'm just so grateful that I'm finally able to have some good video and audio quality for you all here. So I really can't thank you enough for your help with that. And I hope that you get to reap the benefits of higher quality audio and video. If you want to help support me in making videos or just to say thank you, feel free to head on over to my GoFundMe or my Patreon. On the Patreon, we've also got bonus notes, extra findings between videos, so fun facts, and then sneak peeks on videos and the ability to weigh in on what I talk about here. So if you're interested in any of that, head on over to the Patreon, which I'll link up here and below. 
And if you like this video, please share and like it to get this information out there so that people can stop being afraid of gluten unnecessarily. And if you want to stay up to date on all this research and science, be sure to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell below. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time.